Well, that about does the job. <laughs> now we'll have great equipment for our sh fishing trip. Yeah, that's right. You won't forget. No, I won't forget. And don't you forget either. Give a little thought to going on that trip with your mother. I will. It's a deal. We both won't forget. There you are. I've been worried sick about you. Hello, Bert. All right, Vicky, how are you? I'm fine. David, I don't want you ever to run off like that again without telling me where you're going. Is that understood? Yes, I guess so. You have no idea how worried I was. I'm sorry. That's more like it. Burke? Yeah? Ask her now. Uh, about the trip. What trip? Well, I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd take Davy on a little fishing trip out in the bay. In this weather? I told you what she'd say. I'd make sure he was bundled up good and warm. We'll talk about it in the spring. Then maybe you can do it. All the people around here just want to spoil my fun. Where are you going now? To my mother's cottage. I wish you wouldn't. My father says I can, and if he says I can, I'm going. All right. But you be back before dark. Okay. I thought it wouldn't like it. Please, Burke, I don't want to talk about it. Suit yourself. Now I want to know how you really are. I'm all right. I heard about last night. Well, news certainly travels fast around here. Yeah, I tell you something, I was a little concerned. I saved your life once, and I guess I have a sort of investment in you. With you, everything always boils down to business. Well, not, uh... Everything. It's funny that it should be Josette again. Just like before. And fire. Fire? Well, it's very hard to explain, but just before I fainted, I, I got a very strange sensation that, that I was burning alive. What's this Dr. Guthrie up to? Well, he's trying to get to the bottom of Mrs. Stoddard's illness. Well, he sure has a lot of way out ways of doing it. I don't know anything about them, so I can't say whether he has or not. And what's he going all over town asking people questions for? Well, he's trying to find out what everybody knows about her illness. Now tell me, tell me, what is all this seance business? I and mean, what does a doctor have to, have to do with that kind of a thing? That's not a doctor's normal sphere of activity. This is not a normal case. Yeah. I know you're going to be mad at me again and blame me for this, but uh, we're friends, and friends ought to be able to talk about things. Why is all this opposition against Laura? Because Mrs. Stoddard made us all promise to keep David away from her. Ah, us. that's Liz Stoddard. She wants David for herself. She didn't like Laura ten years ago when they first met. I know, I was there. What about you? You want the truth? You're not going to like it. Why don't you let me be the judge? Well, there are an awful lot of things about Laura Collins that are, are questionable. No, oh, they're downright mysterious. I wish you'd be a little specific. All right, I'll give you the facts. Well, she came back here after many years without a word to anyone. Uh, she's been ill for a long time, you know that. She's well now. And she has a mother's natural longing to see her son. What's wrong with that? Well, that part of it is fine. I'm the first to be in sympathy with it. But an awful lot of... Strange things have happened since her arrival. Strange things are always happening up at Collinwood. But these have to do with her. Now there's, there's Sam Evans and his painting. And then there was the fire at, at his house when he burned his hands. And what about that fire in her apartment in Phoenix? That body was identified positively as Laura Collins. And don't forget that she was the last person to see Mrs. Stoddard before she went into the trance, and she never even mentioned it. Can you explain these things? Can anybody? Oh. David, you startled me. Oh, I guess I should have knocked. No, of course not. My goodness. My home is your home. You can come and go as you like. Gee, thanks. Come sit down. 
Tell me about your day. What have you been doing? Hmm? Well, I've been down at the fishing shack, trying to straighten out some of the stuff. Fishing gear. Hmm. Planning on going on a fishing trip? Bert came around and thought I might want to. He might take me out on the bay. Well, that was very nice of him. But I don't think they'll let me go. Why not? I'd let you go if you were staying with me. You would? Well, of course I would. Any time you wanted to. Burke said I should give some thought about going away with you. Well, you know there's nothing in the world that would please me more. Well, I'll think about it. Good. You think about it very hard, hmm? Would we go someplace where there's fishing? If you want to. We could go anywhere at all if you'd go away with me, David. Burke seemed to think I'd like to go away with you. Oh, well. He's a very smart man. He thinks very highly of you. I'm sure if he, if he suggested it, he meant it for your own good. Well, I'll think about it. Mother, what to say, Aunt's like? Oh, just a lot of foolishness. Well, well then how come you went to one last night? You shouldn't even have been told about such things. As a matter of fact, I didn't go. I just happened to be there. Well, tell me about it. There's nothing to tell. The only thing that came of it was... was that Vicky got very upset. She's a very nervous and high-strung girl. And then, of course... you can't place too much faith in what people like that say. That includes Dr. Guthrie. As a matter of fact, David... They might even say some very wicked things about your mother. You mustn't believe anything they say about me, darling. Will you promise me that? Hi, Bert. I just uh, dropped by to tell you better be getting on home. It'll be dark soon. Oh. Oh, otherwise, I'll get in trouble again. Hey, haven't you forgotten something? Don't I get a kiss? Oh, sure. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, David. Burke, now that David runs in and out of here, I, I don't really think you should come here anymore. He might take it into his head to mention something to Roger, and, well, that would ruin everything. I don't want to talk about David. I want to talk about you. Well, why don't you stop talking and start thinking? That's exactly what I have been doing. I just had a little talk with Vicky about you. Oh. That's all I need. Are you listening to her? It's bad enough, this awful influence she has over David. I'm very fond of David. And if you would explain a few things that have been happening around here since you came back, then no one would object if you took the boy away. I know where all this comes from. I can just hear Vicky enumerating everything. The painting, Sam's fire, uh, the body in Phoenix, Liz's illness. Look at me, Burke. If it would take a superhuman being to, to do all those things. Do you see anything but a, a woman appealing for your help? Laura, I want to help. Then do it. Touch me, I'm flesh and blood. I'm the same woman you once loved. Touch me. Well, do you feel anything that is any different than someone just appealing for your help? What's the matter? What is it? Don't work on me, Laura. Burke, think of the future. Think only of... of you and me. But, Pete, I came out here especially to hear that tape of the seance. Well, I should have called you and saved you the trip. 
Don't tell me you erased it by mistake. No, 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 no. The tape was perfectly all right. Every word of the seance was recorded. Then what went wrong? Listen. What? Listen, what sound do you hear? Fire? That's right. Fire. The voices are gone, and in their place, the crackling of flames. The sounds of fire. At first, I thought I, I picked up some kind of static. But that sound, it's, it's unmistakable. That's the sound of fire, all right. Well, then don't tell me I made some kind of mistake, like putting the mic in the fireplace. Every last word lost. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Any force that's powerful enough to do some of the things that have been happening around here lately and we'll find a job like that, no trouble at all. Pete, don't you attach some special significance to the fact that it was replaced by the... by the sounds of fire? Well, indeed I do. If I can only fit all the pieces together. You think you'd get a life-size portrait of Laura Collins, don't you? I wouldn't be surprised. Well, what does it all mean? The fires and the portraits. David's dreams about himself and his mother and the flames. Those ancestors of hers that died in fire. Not to mention that woman who was burned to death in Phoenix. Oh, uh, by the way, that case is being closed today. Well, they finally identified the body? No, they decided they had no hope of ever finding out who it is. They can't help insisting that it has to be Laura Collins. But they can't do that. No. Lieutenant Riley's down in Phoenix now with records, medical tests, affidavits, proving that Laura Collins is alive and is here at Collinwood. How can they close a case when it's so far from being solved? Well, of course, the case can always be reopened if new evidence warrants it, but at least this way they can give the body a burial. They haven't buried it yet? No been in the morgue all this time. Maybe now, whoever it is, can at least have a decent grave. Well, I hope I don't have to close out this case without a solution. What are you talking about? Every, everywhere I turn, I, I feel I'm just on the verge of some new discovery or insight. And then, then something like this happens. Pete, how sure are you that Laura Collins is responsible? Fairly sure. But you know, maybe she has a power that she doesn't know anything about. Or, or maybe she's in touch with a force that acts out her hostilities without her even knowing about it. Or... Or what? Well, there's a possibility that in, in some way or other, a way I can't even begin to explain, Laura Collins is the force herself. She's acting willfully. Is that what you really think? Frank, I don't know what I think. I'd just like to begin to get some results. You have. What? Well, they're results of a kind, anyway. What are? I talked to Dr. Landers down in Boston this morning. He gave me his report on Mrs. Stoddard's condition. What have you heard about my mother? Now, Carolyn, just calm down. What have you heard? Tell me, is she any better? Yes, she's better. She is. Now, just hang on a second, Does that Carol. mean I can see her? Does it mean she'll come home soon? Look, maybe better isn't exactly the right word. What do you mean? Well, maybe improved. Very slightly improved is the way I should have put it. Improved in what way? Well, according to Dr. Landers, her pulse rate and her temperature are much closer to normal. Can she speak, though? No. As a matter of fact, she still isn't even able to move. Can't move, can't speak. I shouldn't have let you get your hopes up, Carolyn. I'm sorry. Please, let me go see her. What would the point be? Maybe... Maybe she'd recognize me. Maybe seeing me would help her Carolyn, in some way. Carolyn, I'd prefer, and I'm, I, I'm sure Dr. Landis would agree, that... that uh, to see anyone who reminded her in the remotest way of Collinwood. But I'm her daughter. I know. And I hope that you'll be able to see her soon. When? Well, I don't know that yet, but... Uh, but even knowing... 
this much. She should improve steadily now. You sound rather sure of yourself, Pete. No, I'm, I'm not sure of that, Frank, but, but even this slight improvement shows one very important thing. What's that? We may not have diagnosed Mrs. Stoddard's illness, but I think we've detected its source. We knew that a long time ago. My Aunt Laura. We don't know that specifically. But the one thing we do know is what seems to affect her in the most positive way. And what's that? Distance. Distance from Collingwood. We know now that the source of the illness is here. Frank and Dr. Guthrie have gone for a walk around the grounds, but they should be back very soon. Well, I guess I can find them. No, I don't think so. Oh, what do you mean? Well, you might be walking in opposite directions and never even know it. Didn't he say where they were going? No. But you can wait for them here. Well, I'd leave the papers here for him to sign, except that I am supposed to get him back to the office as soon as I can. Oh, well, then you might as well wait in the drawing room where you'll be comfortable. Uh, okay, thanks. Sure. You? Not so hot. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. How's your mother? Improved. Oh, yeah? But not very much. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. They still won't let me see her, Joe. That must be kind of rough on you. Oh, I'm used to feeling kind of bad, but always before my mother was here, I always had someone I could turn to, you know, like my mother. Well, remember last time, I told you we were kind of friends, didn't I? I know. Well, then. No, I can't do it, Joe. It wouldn't be fair. Oh, what do you mean it wouldn't be fair? I always turn to you when I need you. Well, if I'm your friend... You really are a friend, aren't you, Joe? As a matter of fact, I don't know. Try me. Seems all I ever did was try you. Uh, uh, now, why don't we start a Be Nice to Carolyn Stoddard Club? Hmm? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a pretty exclusive club. Not too many members, I'm sure. Only the best types. Oh, well, they would have to be. You know, patient, understanding, forgiving. Like you, Joe. I'm not sure I am. That's why I said try me. Look, if there's anything I can do for you... You already have. Oh? For a few minutes, I... felt like I wasn't all alone. You really miss your mother, don't you? Yes. But I've missed you too, Joe. I know I don't have any right to say this, but well, it never occurred to me that I would want you, need you, and you wouldn't be around. That's how selfish I am. Well, I'm, I'm here now. I know. And in a way, that's enough. I, uh, I have to warn you, though, it, it's strictly friendship, right? Right. And I'm grateful, Joe. I really am. Hey, hey, now, Cookie, now you take it easy. Well, I've been alone for so long. It seems like so long now. I know I should stop acting like a little girl, but I can't help it. I... Come here. Come here. I'll be all right. I said, come here. Okay, now put your head right here. It's okay. It's what you need. I don't understand. Okay. It's what you need now. You just have a good cry. Oh, Joe. 